everyone, welcome to Dedicated Dentist where we probed into street 32 reasons why. This video is all about pulpitis and pulpal diagnosis. Assuming you have started your endoclinical postings, and yes, in the beginning it is difficult to uh, give the judgment, clinical judgment. So this video is all about the diagnosis. But before we get into the diagnosis, we have to first understand about pulp. Why the pulpal pain is so severe? The number one reason is because of the confineness that is the pulp is confined in the pulp chamber inside the tooth and hence there is nothing to exert pressure on this is the reason why in pulp polyp cases the there is no pain patient doesn't experience pain why is the reason because the pulp is expanded out of the chamber second reason is it lacks collateral supply that is you see in the last uh, picture the tooth uh, there is only one arteriole entering and one venule exiting from the apical foramen and it has no alternative blood supply third reason is hyperemia there is excessive blood flow inside the pulp pulp is abundantly innervated by the nerve fibers and these nerve fibers are classified according to the diameter velocity of conduction and function so we are going to deal with the a delta and c fibers you see in the picture a delta fibers are located at the periphery at the pulp dentin junction whereas c fibers are located in the center a delta fibers they are responsible for this sharp and localized pain that is the pain is easily localized you can point out the tooth easily that is aching a delta fibers are really sensitive that is they have low threshold that is they give immediate response to any stimulus and these are myelinated hence fast conducting and thicker compared to the c fibers c fibers are located in the center these are unmyelinated and thin these are slow conducting and they are responsible for this dull gnawing throbbing type of pain and diffuse pain another reason why there is diffuse pain in pulp is because the pulp lack proprioception proprioception is present in pdl Hence, it is difficult to localize the pain that is one cannot point out the tooth that is aching. Then, when we are using electric pulp test, the electric pulp test stimulates the A delta fibers first since they have low pain threshold and these are more sensitive. There are about 80% of C fibers and rest of them are A delta fibers. A delta fibers are more responsive to cold and C fibers to hot. A delta fibers are myelinated thicker and these are prone to degenerate. They have low pain threshold that is more sensitive than C fibers, get easily stimulated and give quick response. A delta fibers are sensitive to cold while C to heat. They lie at the pulp dentine junction and that is at the periphery while C fibers lie in the center of pulp. A delta fibers are thicker and they require more oxygen for viability hence they get easily generated, degenerated that is they cannot survive this hypoxic condition that is when there is low oxygen levels. And C fibers on the contrary are resistant to hypoxic conditions or even survive the compromised blood flow compared to A delta. Hence then that is the reason why that in chronic cases the A delta fibers have degenerated quickly. It is because of the C fibers, the irreversible pulpitis or chronic cases, they are stimulated by heat. The pain transmitted by C fibers is dull, throbbing and sensitive and that is why chronic cases will respond to heat like I said. C fibers are responsible for pain occurring during instrumentation. C fibers are innovate many teeth and that is the reason why it is difficult to localize the pain, the locate the pain that is aching. Also there is referred pain associated with the C fibers. Coming to the diagnosis of pulpal diseases that is reversible or irreversible pulpitis. Reversible pulpitis that is pulp here is capable of healing. That is the pulp health can be restored or reversed and that there is pain, no pain or removal of stimulus. That is of say a person complains that he or she was having ice cream and then he had pain while he was having it and then the pain immediately stopped after he stopped eating the ice cream. So that is pain is relieved on removal of stimulus. The pain is sharp and of short duration, POP negative that is there is no pain on percussion. Also radiograph will show no periapical or periradicular changes. Yes. That is pain on having cold food, sweet, sour and even hot at times. But usually for cold. There is no referred pain in such case, no spontaneous or nocturnal pain. Because the caries is very superficial and clinically there is very small caries. And on doing electric pulp testing, the, the current required is less than the control tooth. So, on radiograph, radiolucency is only seen in the enamel and dentil and not reaching the pulp. Irreversible pulpitis, that is the pulp is deteriorated and it is incapable of healing. And that is why root canal treatments are done in cases of irreversible pulpitis.
So the pain persists even after remula stimulus. So the person would give a history like he was having a cup of tea and then he had pain and then when he stopped drinking even after that that pain persisted for few minutes or even hours. The pain here is dull, throbbing, like we discussed that A-delta fibers have degenerated in chronic cases and there's only C fibers present. That is why the pain here is dull, throbbing, continuous and even diffuse, not easy to localize. There can be spontaneous bouts of pain, that is, the pain can start any time, even if the stimulus is not present. Radiograph will show radiolucency involving enamel, dentine and pulp. This is involving pulp. In reversible pulp was not involved. Then there is the history of sometimes patient might even give the history of referred pain that is to temples and sinuses uh, when the maxillary posteriors are involved and ear when lower posteriors are involved. So the treatment here is root canal. Nocturnal pain is present and there might be large caries too and more current is required than that in the control tooth. The reason why there is pain in inflammation is because there's, during inflammation there is release of lysosomal enzyme that cause the hydrolysis of collagen and release kinase which in turn increase vascular permeability, there is increase of fluid or leakage and there is a closure of the lymphatic so there is no drainage. Now the reason why there is nocturnal pain or pain on change of posture in irreversible pulpitis is when a person is standing there is a gravitational pull. On lying, there is removal of this gravitational effect and this causes rise in intrapulpal pressure. Another reason is, when a person is upright, the baroreceptors, they maintain the sympathetic stimulation and that leads to the vasoconstriction of blood vessels. And on lying down, there is this vasodilation increase in blood flow to the pulp. Now, another reason why there is pain on heat, application of heat is because the vessels, these are constricted, but on application of heat, these vessels get dilated and again that increases intrapulpal pressure. When diagnosing, history is very important. Also, pulp test and radiograph. But the first thing you do when you see a patient is you ask for history. These are some of the case scenarios I have mentioned. Now you will tell me which history HOPI first or second is of reversible pulpitis. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.